It is a pleasure to welcome linebackers coach Trent Bray to the Joe Beaver Show on this beautiful Monday afternoon for practice. Trent, thanks for taking time for us. Congratulations on the big win. When we talk about making adjustments, you guys will be adjusting to a whole different kind of style this weekend. But before we get to Stanford, what are your thoughts just about the way your team has been playing football heading into this Stanford game? Uh, the great thing that's happened is we've gotten better every week. You know, and that's always important. Um, we, we had to play a lot of young guys early in the year, and new guys had to step in. We, we've focused on getting better every week. The, the players, you got to give them credit for staying focused, staying locked in through adversity, and, and focusing on what we had to do to win games and to stop teams. Trent, has there been one particular area with your group and the linebackers that you've seen from week to week that's pleased you from a coaching standpoint? Uh, you know, the the tackling's gotten better, which is something that early on was a was a negative for us. It's turned into a positive for us. Our effort to the football has been better, and that's helped our tackling. So those things that the little things that make the difference, you know, holding a play to three yards instead of seven yards because you tackle the guy, those have been a big difference in the game. Trent, without having uh, doing a lot of work on that, actually tackling, what 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 did you guys address and how did you to, to get him to, to improve on that because it really is markedly improved. You you focus on body position in practice. You're not tackling, but when the when you we're going against the scout teams, you have to wrap up and run them back, run our feet on contact. When we're out in open field, making sure our pads are down, our hips are low, and we're tagging off on the inside hip or whatever our leverage is. So just teaching them everything you got to do and, mm-hmm. and having them run through it as best as possible because exactly. it's working. Because you, you're right, it's it's uh, there is improvement. One guy I wanted to ask you about was Jabral Johnson. I thought he was good from the very beginning. Really a, a shining light when things weren't even going that well against Eastern Washington. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on Jabral Johnson. Uh, he's been you know a, a blessing in the skies because you know he was a guy last year that didn't play a lot for us hardly at all. You know, and then it, this in spring and fall camp, he really focused on what he had to do to to put himself in position to play. And then when DJ went down at first, there was the opportunity, and he made the most of it. Then Michael goes down, and now he's got to step in. Why DJ gets you know back in the game speed, but he's been great because he he focuses, he works hard, and he's locked into what he needs to do. Linebackers coach Trent Bray joining us at Pro Throw Field on the Joe Beaver Show. I found myself. Throughout the game, Trent, calling out Ramo Mangyao's name. I mean, it just seemed like he got involved physically in that game in Berkeley. Tell me a little bit about how he's growing and and particularly how important his type of physical play will be Saturday against Stanford. No, it's been huge. Uh, I was, you know, against Cal, he only he played limited reps, but uh, he got about 21 reps. And when you go back and watch the film, they had him for five tackles. I went back and had him for eight. So that's extremely productive. But he brings a physical presence that we, we needed. You know, guys like that, defenses rally around. You know, just like big plays excite a defense and get them pumped up, when a guy comes in and, and, and hits some guy really hard and, and sets the tone, you know, in a physical manner, the defense rises around it. And another guy that you have talked about, he plays with a, a physical level that you need and probably will come to the party Saturday, Caleb Solo. Tell me a little bit about, from your view, Caleb his growth this year being pressed into action and how again he might impact Saturday night if he plays to his capability. Caleb's growth has been good. You know, he he he's worked hard, you know, he he still needs to continue to grow, but he he's been productive. He's got a his things always been, you know, the ups and downs. We got to get rid of the downs so much. You know, he's got to stay consistent. But again, he's a physical guy. He's a guy that has to help us this week because he's a heavy body, he has a heavy hat. And he's he's an athletic player at the same time, so he's he will be a factor for us. Trent Bray joining us here on the Joe Beaver Show this Monday before Stanford. All right, so you've seen misdirection, then you you've seen throw it deep, then you've seen throw it, you know, uh, short and, and and nickel and dime stuff. Now a power game. <laughs> There's a little bit of everything in this conference, isn't there? Uh, yes, yeah. There, every week is something new, but th- this game is for a linebacker. You know, this is an exciting game. This is fun. This is football. You know, this is what you want to do. That line up and let's go, man versus man. Run the ball. Let's see who's better. Not often they get to face a fullback <laughs> and, and, and really play smash mouth football. Yeah. Trent, when you say it's fun and it's football, I know you're not. I mean, 
offenses can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They want to throw it 89 times, they throw it 89 times. Whatever teams feel like they have to do. But from a, from a, just a, I guess when you say it's fun and you, you were a physical player, did you like playing in these kinds of games? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) These were the, you know, you know the guys, they're going to run the ball 30 times a game or more. You know, you know it's going to be a physical battle. You know, those are what you, you get excited about. Going out there and, and flying around and making plays and, you know, this is just an opportunity, too, for us to go against a great team, a, you know, a top ten team, and, uh, you know, show what we're made of. What key is what Stanford does? I mean, is it, I know that sometimes they're not trying to fool anybody, you know, when they go in their heavy sets and so on, but what kind of challenges does their style of offense present to your defense and any defense? They're just they're extremely disciplined in what they do. They're extremely talented and they're extremely physical, you know, so they aren't necessarily trying to, you know, spread you out like a lot of offenses to make you miss in space. They're going to pound it at you and pound it at you and just keep coming at you until you quit. And so that's going to be our challenge is we've got to step up every time and meet them at the line and knock them back. Can they beat you if you try to load, load the line of scrimmage to counter that? Oh, absolutely. They've got talented wide receivers and a talented quarterback. You know, they're, 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 they're a complete team. I mean, there's really not a place where you say, oh, this is a weakness. You know, we have to be solid in our assignments at all levels. And then when it's pass, we've got to drop and do the things we need to do. When it's run, we've got to fly to the football. And it struck me as watching the UCLA game, and you've broken it down from a coach's perspective, but just watching the game on the network telecast Saturday in Oakland, that Gaffney and that line, I mean, when they needed to put that thing away, they were able to. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Gaffney does a great job of, of staying where he's supposed to stay in the run. He doesn't abandon where the play is going because, you know, it might be crowded. He follows those linemen right through the hole, knowing and trusting that they're going to get the push that they want. And so that's what we have to stop is not allowing that push to continue. The other thing that happened, it seemed, last year, and you guys have a little more film and tape on him. When Kevin Hogan started for the first time against you guys in Palo Alto last year, it struck me that the kid made plays and made some plays in that game that kind of swung it just by you had him locked up but he got out mm-hmm. so what have you guys learned a little bit about the Hogan factor from a year ago and that you, you hope to maybe do a little bit better this time you know keep him contained he's a lot like Andrew Luck was you know a lot of third down situations that they convert is is him on broken plays running for the first down so making sure we keep him contained always have someone accounted for him and then you know keep him in the pocket and and make him throw the ball and so we have a chance. And then if he does run, we got to rally to him and, and keep him from getting the first down. Trent, let me ask you one other thing, maybe about two guys that you can break down for us. John's already asked you about Jabrell Johnson. Maybe, you know, since we've talked about some of these other guys, maybe bring us up to speed on, on what you're continuing to see in his growth. And then a guy who started the year as a starter for you, now trying to fight his way back who hopes to still make a mark in the linebacking core and Joel Scotty. I've seen Joel with you and with others before and after practice. Does the kid have a chance before it's all said and done to kind of work his way back into that rotation? So maybe Jabrell and Joel, if you could break them down for us. Well, I, I talked about Jabrell. You know, he's just he's just been consistent and doing his job and being where he's supposed to be. You know, and he's get, trying to get better. He's getting better at the physical part of the game, the tackling, which was early on something that, you know, he made a lot of plays, but he still missed some. You know, he, he's done better tackling that way and he's continuing to focus on it with Joel you know he, he's it's always a chance and the biggest thing I want these guys to know is it's always a competition it's always open competition you know it doesn't matter if it's DJ Jabrell if you, if you get outplayed if you're not playing well you'll get replaced you know so there's always a constant competition so yeah it, it's never over and then these guys know that and, and that's why they come out here and compete and practice there has to be competition for position because it makes everyone better Trent, we appreciate you taking time for us. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Trent Bray joining us on the Joe Bieber Show. The tight ends coach, Kyle Devan. I uh, probably don't need me to remind you that Caleb Smith had a number of errors last game. Is that mental or frustration? or? Yeah, uh, just a little lack of focus. Um, you know, we had, a, um, we had a couple of big plays that, that hurt the team. Uh, you know, we're obviously, as a program we're happy we got the win um but we got to learn from that you know there's things in there that were just mental um you know a couple things on the go false starts are just uh, false starts are you know inexcusable you can't really have those so you know we got to focus this week and and detail up those things and and, uh you know 
hold her water in the line of scrimmage and just do the little things. And uh, that starts with today. It starts with tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. And, and if we do those things right, you know, we'll come out and have a better game as, as, as far as our group. Is there any way to kind of talk to a player and get him back into the game? Yeah, you know, you got to – this game is, is tough. You know, it, it's uh, – you know, sometimes you got to grind. Some sometimes you got to be uh, supportive, and, and they got to understand how how it affects the team. So, you know, just trying to keep their head in the game. Uh, you know, it's one play at a time. If 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 you don't move on to the next play, you're going to think about the play before. So you got to keep re and uh, you know, uh, what do you want to say? You got to keep reiterating uh, moving forward, and and because it's a long game. You know, things happen in the course of a game, and and we got to be able to bounce back from the errors and, and, uh, that we made and move on and try to make another good play. So, You think Caleb's past that? I think so, yeah. I think so. We had a good talk yesterday. And, and you know, he, he's, a, he's a young kid that's maturing as, as, we, as we go. And, and you know, I, I'm not worried about this Saturday. You know, I think, I think he'll bounce back. He'll learn from the things we, uh, he messed up on, and, and he'll be ready to have a good game. Coach, can you talk about the depth and the guys stepping up into the tight end position with Hamlet being down, mm-hmm. Smith, Perry, Clute. Mm-hmm. Talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's it's it, here at Oregon State and everywhere else in this country, it's next man up. We don't want to, you know, Coach Riley doesn't want to all of a sudden, okay, Connor's down, let's quit running our offense. You know, that's just not how this game works. So, you know, Tyler stepped in and and, uh, and then Caleb stepped up and we had to move some guys around and, and they've done a really good job. Kellen you know, uh, went in at H, and, and, uh, and then Tyler went in with our three tight end packages. So, you know, they, they really did a good job of stepping up and keeping our offense intact. Uh, you know, when you lose one of your starters, some some teams have to change their whole offense around. But, you know, we got guys that are in the, um, in the back pocket and ready to go, and, and I know they're excited for the opportunity. And, and, you know, for what they did, I thought they made some – there were some good plays out there that were made. So, is that it? Thanks, Coach. Good stuff from Joe. Well, there was a, a fairly, whoever the Bulldog reporter was, was working an angle on Caleb Smith. Working an angle that I can tell you that if it wasn't uh, Kyle, if it was any other coach, they might have got on it. They just wouldn't <laughs> let it go. Well, yeah, you know, we all saw, we all saw, I, at least Coach Riley. Great stuff, Joe. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, Joe. Good to see you. Um, I may I may try to go the old mini to mini with him to get that. Oh, so yeah, can you yeah, take yeah, a yeah, quick yeah, break yeah. and I'm gonna talk to Joe. But yeah. yeah, Caleb Smith did have some tough moments, but he caught a touchdown and was a was inches away from scoring another touchdown. I mean the kid's got some skill, Doc.